guy goes to the doctor office and asks, hey doc, how's my immune system doing? It's a simple question and an important one. After all, the immune system plays a critical role in combating disease and in maintaining health. So you might expect the doctor to have a relatively good answer to this question. But in fact, apart from extreme disease conditions, we have a limited understanding of the variation between individuals' immune system and how it relates to clinical outcome, and a limited understanding of how our own immune system varies over time. Take, for instance, cancer. The immune system combats cancer. Most recently, immunotherapy drugs have been revolutionizing cancer treatment. Yet, only 20% of patients respond to these treatments in a limited number of cancers. Vaccination is widely considered to be one of the greatest medical achievements of modern civilization. Yet, on average, 30% of older adults over the age of 65 will fail to mount an immune response to the flu shot each year. Imagine instead that the patient had asked the doctor, hey doc, how's my heart doing? Well, we have a large number of cardiovascular tests with established standards for this. And the doctor could prescribe in lifestyle and therapeutic interventions to better the patient's cardiovascular health. For the immune system, that is not the case. We don't have a good way of actually measuring the strength of the immune system. And we don't have a good way of actually intervening and improving it and, and, and strengthening it. The immune system, our immune system, the human immune system, is close to being a black box. You want to peek inside this black box, crack it. This is not a simple task. The immune system is highly complex. Think about the architecture of this system. The building blocks of the immune system are cells. There are many different kinds of cells, each with its own flavor or function. But cells do not work in isolation. They communicate using a group of proteins we call cytokines. Think of cytokines as messages that cells use to communicate with one another. When a cell uh, receives a cytokine message, it changes functionality, does something new. Just like humans, cells have a large vocabulary of messages they can use. And just like a human community, when cells interact together, they generate an immune response that helps us maintain our health, an emergent phenomena. The immune system is a sensory system whose role is to be the sentry or the police of our body. When it uh, monitors the external and internal environment, it adapts to those environments and learns from them. This means that when we start off, we're already different from one another because of our genetics. And as we age and experience life, a life history, if you may, our immune system changes with us, so that in the end, we are very different from one another. Each of us is unique. Information that we cannot replicate in the lab, in an animal experiment. That's why when we take 60 years of tremendous amounts of knowledge in immunology and I try and apply it in a real clinic setting with real doctors and real patients, we come up with limited effectiveness. But here's the good news. There's a revolution happening in immunology. It's a systems immunology revolution that started close to a decade ago and will take us from where we are today in understanding of our human immune system to where we need to be in order to actually use it for improved healthcare and being able to manipulate it. This revolution has two parts. The first stage is about data and the second stage is about interpretation. We can now broadly measure multiple data types in the immune system. The composition of the immune cells, how these cells communicate with one another, and the cytokine messages that they pass, not to mention how they respond, their genetics, the genetics of our, of our system, as well as the genes that these cells are expressing. In a human immune monitoring center, we can now easily measure 100,000 data points on your single sample, blood sample, every time you come in. This means that we have tremendous power to develop new diagnostics, diagnostics that go beyond our genetics and incorporate our life history. Such a human immune monitoring centers are now popping up around the world in leading universities and hospitals. But this is not enough. 
You see, the problem is, is that data is not only big, it is complex. In 2007, I analyzed my first human immune monitoring data set. This was a study of human aging, and we measured out each individual, the composition of their cells, how these cells communicate with one another, and what cytokine messages they pass. I made a very cool discovery showing that young adult cells do not behave the same to cytokine messages as old adult cells. The old adult cells respond less to those messages. But I also made another discovery. My analysis focused on eight different cytokines that change with age. Being new to immunology, I was obviously curious, what are the cells that are secreting those cytokines, sending out those messages, and which cells are actually receiving them? What do the cytokines actually do? I, I ran around campus looking for an immunologist who could tell me what those cytokines actually were doing. But I could not find a single immunologist who could tell me the whole story. I found immunologists who were expert in a single cell type and were able to tell me everything about that cell, but not what the same cytokines were doing in another cell type. I found people who were expert in a particular cytokine and knew everything that cytokine did across the breadth of the immune system, but would not know what other cytokines were doing in that system. And there are hundreds of different types of cells. And there are hundreds of different cytokines and other communication molecules that the immune system uses to communicate between its cells. And there are thousands of different conditions, immune states, diseases and such, that the immune system actually uses its cells and its cytokines each differently. You see, what I realized, the problem was not about us analyzing the data and finding what cytokines change with age. The problem was in actually maximizing our ability to know what those signals meant. For about $1,000 these days, you can analyze a full human genome. You can analyze it with what pretty much has become standard analytics. But you can understand, interpret, only a few percent of that original sequence. The problem is our knowledge. Science has always been a scholarly pursuit. Well-studied, hard-working individuals pushing the boundaries to expand their knowledge. You may think this room is a mess, but for an expert, this room makes perfect sense. It represents the cumulative knowledge he or she has in a specific domain of expertise. I have a room like this at home. <laughs> but the immune system is so complex, so large, we have many such rooms, many different silos. But now, with the data revolution, Experiments can actually generate information across the breadth of the immune system. That means that an expert in one room needs to somehow know information in others, but they are disconnected. That means that information from any single experiment often goes misinterpreted, underutilized, or simply ignored. What we need is somehow to maximize the bang from the buck. What we need is somehow all this information and all this knowledge in one standardized library, but in a machine-readable format, one that can give us a common framework in which we can ask in a single system questions about, in a single model, if you like, questions about the entire system. We've been building exactly this type of technology in an academic industry collaboration, a machine learning environment that integrates all the data and all the knowledge into a single computational framework. Using the system, we've been able to ask even simple questions, such as how, are, how much information do we know about cytokine messages in the immune system? Turns out, just 17% of cytokines comprise half of the communication we're aware of in the immune system. That means that essentially we understand about an eighth of the communication that probably exists in the immune system. On the bright side, just having all this information in one machine learning model allows us to make new predictions, identify new cytokine messages, identify new ways in which the immune system is associated with disease. Those generate hypotheses that we then go and validate in the lab. This takes us to a place where immunology could actually change how it is done today. Measurements of the immune system from birth to aging are already coming out. We're developing diagnostics for medical procedures such as surgery, predicting vaccine responses and drug responses. In the future, a patient will go into a doctor's office and the doctor could prescribe a complete blood count, a test we've essentially been doing now for 60 years, but it will be very different than it is today. We'll have specific immune biomarkers tested. 
and we'll have tailored norms fitting the life history of the patient. The computer can then take this information, synthesize this, and provide the clinician with an immune status of the patient that will allow us to predict a patient's risk and drug response profile. So when a patient asks a doctor, hey doc, how's my immune system doing? Perhaps the doctor will say, it's doing fine, but I'd watch out this year because I think you're going, we won't be responding to the flu shot this time around. And when a group of physicians need to, needs to treat a patient for cancer, they will have the patient's full immune status and be able to predict the specific therapy that will be tailored for this patient and their risk of adverse events. The immune system will be less of a black box and more of something we can reliably tweak. Don't you think this will give us much more knowledge and be able to save, we'll be able to save much more lives? I think so. But we need to be working together with machines. Thank you.